Yeah, life from a different angle. Because uh, in when we read about the life and when Jesus came saying that this is the will of the Father and this is his judgment for all eternal life, right? So at the same time, we see some uh, other things that doesn't seem to be aligning what, with what he's saying. Uh, it seems to be like, if it's about life, what's the point of like talking about bitterness and uh, let's say offense and uh, forgiveness, heart, mm -hmm. all the issues like this. Because all that he's going to do is to reveal the new way, which is actually the only way that was from the beginning. From the beginning, the way was to uh, be in the rest of God, mm -hmm. which means God created all things, gave it to man, and he said, enjoy it, mm -hmm. right? And he said, don't eat from the knowledge that ministers to you death, simply, yeah. because my will for you is to live and enjoy fellowship with me. But at the same time, he went and he ate uh, from this knowledge of good and evil. So because of that, so many things came, which are the fruit of something that happened. So now, God said, eat from everything except that one. Mm -hmm. So now, the way, the truth, and the life is already there mm -hmm. from the beginning. It was to eat from the tree of life. The truth was, God has chosen life. Yeah. And he said, you, you are going to have life. And it was in him. So if they had listened to what he had said, then they were going to have it for, forever. Mm -hmm. But then they were, uh, when there was another voice coming, they deviated from that, the way. And they went and they listened to something else. And uh, when they heard, it was that if you eat from this tree, which is the knowledge of good and evil, your eyes are going to have open, you're going to know uh, the difference between good and evil, and then you're going to be like God. So the moment he listened to this, he was offended mm -hmm. at what God had already said. Because God said, eat life. Mm -hmm. He was offended. Offense simply means um, stumbling over something or basically putting ourselves in a place that what, what, what was supposed to be a help to us to become a stumbling block to yeah. us, right? Mm -hmm. So what God has said, His voice was going to be a help for us, not a stumbling block. That's right. So if they had listened to the voice of the Father, they would have lived. So now when it came to that place, uh, immediately start so many things happening. Uh, to Adam, to Eve, to creation and then to their children, like to Cain. Mm -hmm. So he becomes the first even murderer. He kills his brother, all of this. Mm -hmm. So now when we come to the New Testament, he uses something called unrighteousness. And then he says that God came to bring righteousness because humans' perception of righteousness was what they gained from Adam, mm. which was uh, the strength of their flesh rather than trusting uh, the one that wants to give them free gift. Yeah. So God wanted to give them free gift of life, free gift of grace, mm -hmm. free gift of everything. He had given them righteousness. But then they started forgetting that and producing their own righteousness, establishing their own righteousness. Yeah. So now when it comes to that place, that unrighteousness starts producing its fruit. Unrighteousness is not the fruit. Unrighteousness is the root of the issue. Mm. Our life is in Him. So because we are in Him, we are going to produce who He is. Now, previously it was unrighteousness, which means we were not in Him. That's why we, we would uh, basically bring forth the fruit of um, something that we had not gained or received from God. So now what came was from the good and evil. Mm. So the way that they uh, fall, fell into was to every time to go eat from a tree, which is knowledge of good and evil, to say which one is good, which one is bad, trying to find the good and eat the good. Mm. But they didn't know while they're eating the good, actually we were eating death. Yeah. Because it was from good and evil, both of them. 
are from the same tree. <laughs> and God said, the tree will give you death. So God's point of life for human was not good. It was the perfection, which we read in the book of Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. Over and over. So it's perfection is a place that you don't have any consciousness of yourself, but you have the consciousness of God. You're basically coming back to innocence, mm. meaning knowing nothing according to the knowledge of good and evil, mm. knowing everything according to life, knowing everything according to knowing God according to what He reveals to you, not yeah. the way that we judge Him. Because mm. if I want to judge God, I might have perceptions based on the experience that I've had in life because I see dimly. But if He reveals to me who He is, then that becomes a place of strength for me. And then I judge Him according to what He is or who He is. And then I start seeing Him the way He is. And then that draws me to Him because I see Him as a God that is all love. He is all goodness. He is all mercy. Mm. He is all grace. But the natural knowledge or the knowledge of good and evil had uh, introduced God in a different way to us. Hmm. That's why even when we read the Bible, still we don't, we judge Him sometimes according to what we have heard. That's right. Even the teachings that are out hmm. there. So which is, if you don't do this, still that's the mindset. Hmm. You are going to be judged. Hmm. If, if you don't, let's say, pay your tithe, then you're not going to be blessed. This is all coming from a knowledge, a system called good and evil. Mm. God is the father of good gifts. He never said, do this, so I give this to you. He says, that's the wisdom of the world. That's the wisdom that you gain from the tree of knowledge and knowledge of good and evil, which means you trust in the work of your own hand hmm. to bring a sacrifice to God. Yeah. And then uh, expect him to receive your sacrifice and based on that bless you hmm. and he says that was never God's because that is not a father and son relationship mm -hmm. and God is the father of lights is the giver of good gifts mm -hmm. so now when he comes to uh, basically uh, Jesus when he came he came to be the perfect revelation of who God is That's which true. means when you look at him uh, you have to see him as God, meaning saying that this is who God is. Hmm. If you can find any flaw in Him, then you can say, yeah, that, that's in God also. If you can't, then you shouldn't say God is this way, hmm. which means if you see Him healing, casting out demons, blessing people, never judging anyone, never accusing anyone, be a friend of sinners, be uh, basically helping the broken hearted, right. be toward uh, the poor. If you see that, that's who God is. Because he says, he said, when they said um, to him, show us the Father, he said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So now, when it comes to um, hmm. the way he started basically, uh, his ministry on earth was based on teaching, <laughs> constantly. Hmm. Because he came to teach hmm. people the wisdom that they had lost. Mm. They, he came to teach people who God is. That's right. Right? Because they had a certain <laughs> idea. They said that, for example, an example, Moses told us in the law, and they referred that to God. And yet he said, the reason Moses gave that to you, it's not because God gave it to you, it's because it f your, your heart was so stony. Mm. And God had to write a law on stone and put it in front of your face <laughs> so you can see what your heart is doing to you. That's right. And to others. Yes. It was a revelation of sin. Hmm. Law. They were constantly being killed yeah. and destroyed. And they were always referring all the destruction to God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And then he comes and he says... It's not God. I have to show mm. you. So there are so many examples that he does this. Um, sorry, this is taking too long, but I think this is necessary to say this verse. 
when it comes to um, uh, when they are bitten by serpents in the wilderness, right? Mm -hmm. New Testament says they tempted Christ and they were bitten by serpents. Mm -hmm. Old Testament says God had sent the serpents. But the New Testament says a different way. Because the revelation that is in the old books, it's not through the eyes of the Spirit. It is written in the letter, and if you read it that way, that's how you will judge. Hmm. But when you come to the new, that's when, uh, for example, Jesus himself, when people want to be like Elijah, the way it's written in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. to bring down fire and destroy a city, yeah. he says you don't know yeah. what your spirit of. Mm -hmm. So he's not talking about a different spirit. He's talking about the spirit of God, which means from the beginning, what I'm telling you about the spirit is who he has been. He never brought any fire down mm. on anyone. That's right. But you read the story of Elijah and you think God did it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So now when it comes to uh, that story of serpents, God says to Moses, <coughs> uh, take a bronze snake, put it on a pole, and they already know in the law is written, whatever is hanging on a tree is cursed. Yeah. So when they put serpent on this pole and he says if they see that there is a serpent hanging on a tree they know that the serpent is cursed so when they see that they realize oh it was not God it was the serpent that was killing us mm. and if what was killing us is cursed then we can live mm -hmm. so God gave them a revelation of what was happening to them through their own tongues yeah actually the story says this way that they started doing this and they sinned with their tongue. So now when it comes to the New Testament, it's the same story. Jesus says, still you don't have any revelation of what's been happening to you. I need to become that sin, going on the cross, being taking the place of serpent, which is mm. the sin. I need to become sin and I, I need to allow sin that comes on me do its work. Yeah. So then you can see what sin has been doing to you because the fullness of the, that is mm. on me now. So if you can see the Son of Man lifted up, and then you can live. Mm. Because then you start judging God according to who He is, yeah. not according to what you thought mm. He is. Mm. Right? Mm. So based on that, when it comes to Jesus, He says, I came to bring a kingdom, which is the kingdom of God. So the way that people wanted to get into the kingdom was based on their works again. Mm -hmm. So he has to constantly correct them, constantly yeah. teach them, constantly. And that's the place that mm. the same story, the Son of Man being lifted up, they, Nicodemus comes to Jesus and he says, how are you doing these miracles? Hmm. Jesus immediately answers the root of his question. Hmm. He goes to the root. He doesn't say, he doesn't explain, he says, no one can see the kingdom. That's right. No one can enter the kingdom yeah. unless he's born. So he doesn't say you need to be doing something. Mm. You just need, need to be born from the spirit. Mm -hmm. You need to be coming out of the spirit. Mm. By the works of the flesh, works of the law, you can never enter the kingdom. Mm. Luke 18 verse 9. Also he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves. Okay, that they were righteous. So this is the point. They trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others, mm. meaning they were not. So two men, uh, this is the parable that Jesus says, two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other is a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioner, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as rise his eyes to heaven, but uh, beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man 
went down to his house justified rather than the others, mm. the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, mm -hmm. and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Mm. So there is a person that is trusting in himself for righteousness, which means everything that I think about who God is is right. So, and what I think about God is if I just fast and pay my tithes, uh, I can please God. The other one comes and he says, I don't have anything to trust in. Would you be merciful to me? So he's coming to receive a free gift. This one is bringing his own work. Mm -hmm. Right? So now, verse 15. Then they also brought infants to him that he might touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him and said, Let the, chil let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for of such is the kingdom of God hmm. assuredly I say to you whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it so little children have no knowledge of what is hmm. right and what is wrong hmm. they receive everything that you give them if you give a gift they just receive it hmm. So they don't come and say, let me see first if I have done enough or let me go wo work for it, right? Mm. So now the next one is the story of the rich young ruler. So these are all the same uh, concept basically. Verse 18, now a certain ruler asked him saying, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Shall I do? What shall I do? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one God. You know the commandments. Do not, do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your, your mother. And he said, All these things I have kept from my youth. So when Jesus heard this, <laughs> he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me but when he heard this he became very sorrowful for he was very rich hmm. and when Jesus saw that he became very sorrowful he said how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. Okay? So now, this is the same story that is in Mark 10. So mm -hmm. go back to Mark 10 to see how he explains this. Mark 10? Mark 10, verse 22. But he was sad at this word. This is the wrong young ruler. And went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Mm. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again. Basically, they have a question in their heart. So he's answering. And said to them, children, <laughs> how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter mm. the kingdom of God who trust, the word riches is actually your possession. So he mm. says, if you bring what you already have and think because you are bringing that to God, God will say, come into the kingdom. That's right. He says, that's unrighteousness. Uh -huh. Righteousness is this, that you come to him and you, you, you allow him to give it to you. You come to him as a little children. Mm. He just said children. The mm -hmm. previous one was the rich man. But to them when he talks, he says children. Yeah. If you need to enter, you shouldn't trust in your possession, mm -hmm. which is basically everything that you have in life. If you're paying your tithes, if you're fasting, if you're giving to the poor, none of them 
is a point of entering into the kingdom. That's why it says it started right before these two parables. It started with that verse that he said those parables to some who trusted in themselves. Exactly. So one parable is the guy who was a Pharisee and he trusted in his tithes and offerings yeah. and his fasting. And he thought because of that, he can receive the kingdom yeah. or life. Another is a rich man who said, what do I need to do? Yeah. Because he thought it's by his work that he can have life. And then, and then he, so he was trusting in his possession. Exactly. So trusting in the works, what, um, what um, you know, are you uh, trusting in the position or trusting in the, your fasting and prayer or, or trusting yeah. in the, like the tithes and offerings. Exactly. So this is how, and this was interesting that you said, this is by doing this, they call themselves righteous. Mm -hmm. But this is, they're righteous in their own eyes. Yeah. But from the eyes of God, they are not righteous. Why? Because they're despising others. Because exactly. they are saying, I'm righteous than somebody else, so I deserve to receive by the works of the law that I have done. But another person, I'm, oh God, I thank you, I'm not like this <laughs> tax collector. So despise the tax collector already. Love never does that. You know, I'm, I'm better in something and look, this person is not, right? Yeah. So this is, this is unrighteousness in the sight of God. Because what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination mm -hmm. to the Lord. Mm -hmm. so, so the works, trusting in our works, basically, yeah. is, uh, is, is the unrighteousness in the sight of God. And this is God. very narrow. Very this is like, narrow. Because we are not <laughs> repeating the same thing that we have read uh, again and again. This is a revelation knowledge. Yes. This is something that changes lives. Mm. This is something that our heart really opens to a father that has been this mm -hmm. way from the beginning. Mm -hmm. But human beings have been blinded. How? Because of that, what they ate, the knowledge that came in. And God came to remove that knowledge yeah. forever. So that we don't judge anything saying this is good and let me do this for God. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because, you know, we see that. We see that a lot for... Uh, for somebody for healing or somebody wants to get healed or something, you know, or um, they need, they, they require a need yeah. or something. And, and, and we hear this a lot, mm -hmm. right? That, uh, you know, what, what else do I need to do? Mm -hmm. What else do I need to do? And right there, that shows that from the beginning, uh, it was by the works of this person. Mm -hmm. You know, even sometimes that if we come and so we say, or we hear or we say that, you know, you need to increase your faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that means we put this, mm -hmm. if we put uh, receiving this burden, we put, we put the receiving on how much, your how much faith you have. Mm -hmm. And then we change the faith to a currency. Oh mm -hmm. God, I have this much, how much can you give me? So it's a position. Yeah. So the faith become a riches as a money trust in, yeah. and you trust in and you think that you can bring that to God to give it to you. Yeah. Right? But, but that right there shows that we, we never understood what faith is then. Of yeah. course, the just shall live by faith. But what is faith? Mm -hmm. You know, that right there shows that the, the meaning of faith and the understanding of faith has been yeah. twisted. Because the faith is this, a little child to receive what father has. Yeah. That's it. So rather than bringing focus on the faith and what we need to do, and then later on Jesus says, uh, uh, do not, uh, so this is my Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yeah. How much faith a little child has? Like faith is not a teaching that you teach somebody. Otherwise, who taught the little children to learn faith? Mm -hmm. No one. It just simply means they don't have any other knowledge. Yes. Mm -hmm. They are innocent mm -hmm. toward God. Exactly. When they see their father, mm -hmm. they don't question his goodness. They already know I came from him. Mm -hmm. How can he be cruel to me? Mm -hmm. How can he judge me? How can he expect me to do something to bless me? Because the, the interesting part is because Jesus is relating and referring this 
receiving the kingdom and entering because we have a we have seeing the kingdom receiving the kingdom entering the kingdom and inheriting the kingdom these four are, are different you see you receive mm -hmm. you enter and you inherit it starts with seeing receiving entering and then inheriting so these four are different so now Jesus relates that receiving and entering the kingdom receiving and entering the kingdom he relates it to a little child yeah. Why is it a little child? Because we always see a little child or the little child, um, you know, the, uh, as one of the things that we always see in a little child is the faith. Yeah. But I think the greatest uh, highlight here, the little child, is the little child. Child. Yeah. The one who has a father. You know, when we come to, when we say, when we talk about the son, there's always a father. When you talk about the father, there's always a son too, because a man can't be a father if they don't have a son or a daughter, right? So every time there's a child or a son here, it's a relationship that this person has a father. So now here it says, the servant works to get something from a master, yeah. but the child receives from the father. Yeah. So, and I believe the greatest revelation that yet need to come for us to understand that we are not orphans and we have a father. Mm -hmm. This is the, you know, we have, a, we have some teaching and a couple of Bible studies already that it's the, it's the revelation of the son of God that the creation is waiting mm -hmm. to, uh, to be free from this bondage of corruption. And when we are talking about the Son of God, immediately the Father comes to the picture. You know, like understanding that, okay, to receive the kingdom, and this is, Jesus says, this is the Father's, Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yeah. So the little child can easily receive because he or she simply knows that he's my Father. Mm -hmm. And he has a gift exactly. for me. Because... This person, this child knows that, that that there's a father. So, and I understand that we always see the faith, that you need to have a childlike faith, but I think it's more referring to understanding the father. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's it. Because again, a little child that is supposed to receive the kingdom or enter the kingdom, and we say you receive it by faith, then where is the faith of that little child? Again, it's, it's the innocence. Mm -hmm. It's not knowing anything else about the father. Yes. Rather than it is his good pleasure to give me the kingdom. Mm. Not based on what I have done. Okay, I'm going to show you something. Because um, we said unrighteousness is not what you do. Unrighteousness is the root of we used to do. The same way, righteousness is the root, is a tree. Yes. So the, f the fruit that we bear is because we mm. are already righteous. Mm -hmm. We are not doing that out of our own wisdom. That's right. No Christian has ever produced anything. Mm -hmm. All they are doing is basically the fruit of the Spirit is coming mm. out. The same way, unrighteousness is, again, a tree. Righteousness and unrighteousness are both are trees. So yeah. these are two wisdoms. One is the wisdom of yeah. God, is one is the wisdom of the world, mm. which is earthly, sensual, demonic, which that system says you have to work for what to God receive. wants to give. Yes. This one says it's a free gift of righteousness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a free gift of the grace of God that he wants to give. Mm -hmm. So now there is... <laughs> That's uh, why it's a good news. Exactly. <laughs> And this is... I need to work. <laughs> it, it has taken not God, but human being thousands of years mm. to come to a place that can finally get a glimpse of what God is trying mm -hmm. to say. He's, he constantly wants to... Anything in the Bible, yeah, you read funny. about the truth, obeying the truth, uh, working righteousness, mm. doing good works, all of them mm. are related to the tree of life. Mm -hmm. Meaning... Don't try to bear fruit. Be in the vine. Mm. Be, remain in the branch. Let him teach you. Let yeah. him write his own law. In, mm -hmm. Okay, the law in 
Hebrews 8. He says, the New Testament, New Covenant that That's I true. will make yeah. with, with the house of Israel and house of Jacob, which is us, every believer. He says, I will put my law in their heart. Mm. Okay? Which law? If it was the law of Moses, that's already producing works. Mm -hmm. When Jesus came, uh, after his death, by his sacrifice, he became our high priest. Mm. He's called after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek, yes. Right? So now Hebrews 7 talks about this. And he says, there was before Jesus, there was Levitical priesthood. Mm. But Jesus came from uh, the tribe of Judah. Levi is the one that was giving tie to Melchizedek already. That's right. Why? Because Levi is from Abraham. Mm -hmm. And he was in Abraham's loins uh, when Abraham gave tie to Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. And he says, we know that the lesser is always blessed by the greater. That's right. Which means if Levi gave tie to Melchizedek, Melchizedek is greater than Levi, mm -hmm. two priesthood. Under priesthood was given the law. Because there was a priesthood from Aaron, then a law came. Okay. You're, you're following so mm -hmm. far? That's the, that's the, that's from God. Just take it this way for now. So there was a uh, priesthood, under it was given a law, mm -hmm. by which there was given a rules, a set of things that how they have to bring sacrifice, do the washing, baptisms, then go mm. into most holy place, all of that. So now he says, which means if, if priesthood changes, the law needs to be changed also. Yeah. Mm. Right? So he calls that law, the law of fleshly commandments under Levitical. Yeah. So now he says, if we, list, if we are able to see Melchizedek was before Abraham, mm was before Levi, which means that priesthood was already there. The priesthood of Jesus was already there. So when Levi came, priesthood was not changed. It was just the shadows showing them what they were blinded to. Mm -hmm. Just to show them there is such a thing. You can trust in God. You can avoid bringing your sacrifices and your works to God. Mm -hmm. Melchizedek have been there yes. already. King of righteousness has been already yes, there. Yes. You don't receive righteousness by your works. Mm. Righteousness is something that Melchizedek gives you. Exactly. King yeah. of righteousness. Yeah. That's the meaning of his name. So which means the law that was from the beginning under Melchizedek priesthood is different than the law that was under Levitical priesthood, mm. which is the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. So the law that the priesthood that comes through Jesus as Melchizedek should have the law that was before the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. What was that law? Life, mm -hmm. spirit, mm -hmm. from the beginning. Yeah. That's the fullness of who God is. The law of God is Christ. Mm -hmm. The law simply means the teaching of God. So the teaching under the old was fleshly. Yes. The teaching under Jesus is the fullness of revelation of who Christ is, the glory yeah. of God. Spirit, yeah. So now he says, I put that Christ in your heart, mm -hmm. the law of the Lord. So because you are able to have him in you, because of that you are able to bear fruit. Mm -hmm. Because he's already in you. Mm -hmm. In Acts 8, uh, there is a place that some people are being, being baptized, mm -hmm. uh, just the baptism in water, but mm. they haven't received the Spirit. Yeah. So apostles uh, hear about this and they send uh, Peter and John to lay hand on them so they receive um, mm. the, the Holy Spirit. Let's go to Acts 8. And when Simon the sorcerer saw that through uh, laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, hmm. saying, Give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hand may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, Your money perish with you, because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased hmm. with money. You thought that the gift of God could be purchased with mm. money. 
Again, you thought the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness, and pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. <laughs> for I see that you are poisoned by bitterness hmm. and bound by iniquity. So now, that word poison, mm -hmm. this, this is how you should read. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of unrighteousness. So I see that you are in the bond of in the goal of bitterness and in the bond of unrighteousness. Mm. So the reason he offered money to get the spirit is because of the bond of unrighteousness mm. in him. What is unrighteousness? What he Peter just described. Thinking that you can purchase from God something. Yeah. So you by your own. So you can rely on your own possession. Yeah. And get a free gift by your works. By your works. That's called unrighteousness. And it's interesting because it immediately refers that to the heart that is not exactly. right in the sight of God. The heart that is not right in the sight of God basically says in the sight of God, this way of yeah. thinking and operating, it's not right. Exactly. So the word right, it's, um, it's the word straight. Straight, yeah. So, it, so that's why it's an unrighteousness to yeah. him. Which means if he wants to offer you a gift, if you receive it, you're called righteous. That's right, yes. But if you want to buy it from him yes. by your works, yeah. then it's called unrighteousness. Yes, yeah. And then, and then that can't happen. Can't. A gift cannot be purchased. Yeah. You cannot purchase a gift. If God gives a gift to somebody who has come to purchase by their own works, yeah. that means he has just sold this gift. So this gift, this is not a gift anymore. Yeah. So he, this gift is not going to be given to anyone who wants to come and rely on the prayer, fasting, mm -hmm. uh, how much you know, your revelations, um, your money, your possessions, the works of your hand. This is not going to be given to somebody who comes with that attitude because that's a right heart. That's not the right heart in the sight of God, yeah. basically, right? And the interesting part is Simon immediately, I like, the, I like that part <laughs> because he immediately realizes that. Yeah. He doesn't say, oh yeah, but. Yeah. Oh yeah, but, but you know what? I thought maybe, um, oh yeah, no. Verse 24, he immediately says, pray to the Lord for yeah. me that none of the things which you have uh, spoken may come upon me. So, P so Peter... That's righteousness. That is righteousness. Pray. So Peter immediately ex is exposed a, yeah. a root of a bitterness yeah. and a root of an unrighteousness in him. So this guy wasn't really paying attention to what he's doing. He thought this is how he grown up all his life. Exactly. He was a sorcerer. He was charging people to do sorcery for them. Yeah. Right, so this is how he was grown up, and now he, now he thought people would co people were coming to me and offering this to me, so I can do something. Maybe now I can offer money because, mm -hmm. but but Peter exposed that, and this guy immediately said, "Please pray for me yeah. that what you say is not going to come to me." But what <laughs> happened is he didn't say, "Yeah," but he immediately received. He now became like is, a little child. So yeah. this is immediately it's it's this he received the righteousness. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's basically God is trying to, ha, from the beginning, has been trying to say it is by grace. Mm -hmm. It is a free gift. You can't work for it. You can't pay for it. You yeah. can't purchase it. You can't do. If you do, you fall into serpent's uh, trap. Yes. And yes. she will kill you, mm. serpent, because it's a wisdom that comes from the serpent, mm. all that he's trying to do is accuse you before God. Mm. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah. the story is tree of life, knowledge of good and evil. Yeah. The way that God 
from the beginning wanted for children was his love mm -hmm. to give them freely everything mm. so he says if if they go to uh, the other way it hurts them yeah adam came into anguish of soul he came to uh, mm. eating from the sweat of his face the ground didn't yield to him why because he ate from not because god did it Mm -hmm. It's what he, they brought unto themselves. Mm -hmm. God said, I want you to live. I always put in front of you yeah. life and death, yeah. but I say choose life. Yeah. If you listen to basically God's voice, he's constantly saying, I want to have life. Mm -hmm. He never says, because you have done this. Mm -hmm. He could have said to Simon. Mm -hmm. He realizes immediately that Wow, I've been unrighteous. I mm. thought I can purchase the gift of God. Mm -hmm. And he said, you can't work for it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, which means if, we, if somebody doesn't receive the grace of God, mm -hmm. they become bitter. He says, you are in the goal of bitterness mm -hmm. and in the bond of unrighteousness. Yeah. Which means if you think the gift of God can be freely received, mm -hmm. then you won't be in bitterness mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. won't be in unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Hebrews 12 verse 15. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness mm -hmm. springing up. Mm -hmm. So he says the reason root of bitterness springs up is because of falling F short, short of, of the, the grace glow. of God. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, falling short of the grace of God uh, causes the root of bitterness to spring up. Yeah. Mm. And God doesn't want bitterness to spring up. So, He says, then receive grace. Yeah. Receive the free gift. Exactly. Hebrews 6, verse 7. For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated receives blessing from God. But if it bears thorns and briars, it is rejected and near, near to be cursed, whose end is to be burned. So the earth that doesn't receive the rain that comes upon it often, it, it bears thorns and briars. It's yeah. not, it's not going to produce herbs or the useful fruits Fruit. or anything, right? So the earth that doesn't receive the rain, so that comes upon it often. Paul says, there's a thorn in my flesh. And he goes to God and three times and he pleads with the Lord. And the Lord says, my grace is sufficient for, for you. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean, well, this is what it is, you bear it. Who cares? It says the land that does not yeah. receive the rain bears thorn. My grace is sufficient for you. So the rain is always in the Bible. It's a, it's a rain of the grace. Yeah. So if you receive the grace, you, your land doesn't produce thorns and tassels and briars. Yeah. The land that does, the, the grace comes upon it often, does not produce it. So my grace is sufficient. So receive my grace, mm -hmm. so your thorns will be removed. You're not going to produce thorns. So now we go to Genesis. So Genesis 3 verse 17. Then to Adam he said, God, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. It doesn't say you are cursed. Mm -hmm. It says, curse is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistle it shall bring forth. The land which does not receive the rain yeah. that comes upon it will produce thorns. So the land that does not receive grace produce thorns. Adam, because you have done this, the land is going to produce thorn. Why? Because you rejected my grace. So Adam, you eat of it, you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, yeah. and not the tree of life. 
So the land is going to produce thoughts. So that right there, that shows the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it's the works. By, it says that um, uh, you shall eat the herb of the field in the sweat of your face. That means, man, you're going to work for it. You're going to sweat until you, bear, you get some food out of this ground because the ground is cursed. Why? Because, because the grace is rejected. Yeah, because he says cursed is the ground for your sake. And Hebrews 6 said the land that drinks in the rain receives blessing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So here when he says the ground is cursed, he says not because the, crown, the ground is first cursed, because it didn't receive the grace. The grace. It is, it's a mm -hmm. curse not to receive grace. Mm -hmm. Because the word ground, cursed is the ground, the word ground is actually uh, Adama, mm. which is Adam related to Adam. It is taken from Adam, yeah. Because Adam was taken from the ground. Adam was taken from the Adama. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he says, because Adam rejected the blessing of God, the grace. That's a choice yeah. already to be cursed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and the thing is, if you go to Romans chapter 5, I, I'm just going to read this quickly, verse 17. For by one man's offense, death reigned through the one. We'll, we'll come back to this later. Much more, those who have received, who has, those who have received the abundance of grace, yeah. And the gift, of the gift of righteousness, not that you purchase with your own works. Those who have received the grace and the gift of righteousness, they shall reign in life. They are not going to struggle in life. They shall reign in life. What does the reigning mean? <laughs> they shall reign in life. The corrupted nature wants to run away from problem. God wants to... Well, God wants you to reign over it. How? Because my grace is sufficient. Why are you coming to me and saying you have a thorn? The land that receives the grace does not produce thorn. Yeah. Right? So, so and then those who have received the grace and the gift of righteousness, they're going to reign in life. So now we have a tree of life, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Adam, don't eat of this one. That means eat of the other one. So, okay, Adam, because you eat of this one, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the grace is not available. The land is not going to, you just rejected my grace because it now works. Why? Because, there's a, because it says there's a judgment and then condemnation because of the knowledge of good and evil. Yeah. So, but if you have, but the, in the tree of life, there's always grace in it. Because you can't have life by the works of your law, by your own works. Right? Because life is a gift. Yeah. Life is a gift that is given. So now, I just want to go a little in the offense part. Do you have anything to yeah, say? Yeah, I want to say something here and then. See, righteousness, I want us to get this. Righteousness is not good works. That's true. Righteousness is a way of living. That's right. It's the way. Okay. Mm. God never says in His Bible, do this. That's right. What human being he here is do. What he says <laughs> yes. is actually when Jesus came, uh, he's, he said uh, in Matthew chapter 5, first he starts saying, blessed is the pure in heart for yeah. they shall see God. Blessed is the poor in spirit yes. for they shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he says all those things and he says, you have heard you have heard what I say. <laughs> you have heard it was said, uh, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, uh, love your yes, enemy and bless right. those who curse you and pray for those who persecute you and despise, mm. um, despise you, right? And then he says, for your father, he causes his reign to come on the just That's and right. unjust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He causes, they don't receive it. Mm. And, uh, and then he <laughs> says, so therefore, it, the translation says, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. But it's not the case. Mm. He says, 
you shall be perfect, you will be perfect as your father is perfect. Mm. He says you can't be perfect. Something needs to happen. He's prophesying over them. I checked the tense of the verb. It says you will be. It's a future. Yes. <laughs> In Hebrews, he says now he has perfected mm. us. What did you do to become perfect? Mm. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's a gift. His blood. Yeah caused you to become perfect so righteousness as much as unrighteousness is a way of living righteousness is a way of living mm. too so unrighteousness is the exact opposite of unrighteousness is the exact opposite of righteousness righteousness is according to Romans 4 he says this is righteousness mm. believing that God justifies the ungodly <laughs> believing that God justifies the ungodly once again somebody is ungodly if he believes that God justifies him he says it will be credited to him mm -hmm. what he believed yes. is righteousness yeah. any circumstances of life if you believe at any point it is God that f can fix mm. and you, yeah. you ask Him for help. Yeah. Don't cover yourself, <laughs> but ask Him. He says that's righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. Let me show you this, Romans 4, uh, verse 4. He says, now to him who works the wages or the reward. Mm. Now to him who works the reward are not counted as grace, but has debt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once again. Now to him who works, the reward are not counted as grace. Mm. If somebody works, what has been given to him is not grace. That's right. It's not free gift. Because he has already worked for it, and it's called debt. Mm. He says, but to him who does not work, but believe, on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. <laughs> Believing that God gives gifts mm. is called righteousness. This is the way of righteousness. Mm. The way of unrighteousness is not believing that God freely gives yes. gifts. That's Believing that that's we good. have to do something. Yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. This is this yeah. is God's definition. Yes. Anything else is the fruit of that system. Yeah. Because Adam and Eve didn't believe that mm -hmm. God freely has given them all things, they went to achieve something more. They went to find out what is good and evil mm. and then choose good and bring the good and give it to God and say what we have see what we have done. Yeah. And that's a boasting in flesh. Yeah. It's something that man mm. has done. He says, but not even Abraham, mm -hmm. according to flesh, did something. Mm. He believed God and it was accounted to him. Yeah. So yeah. it's always going back to him, going back to the realization yeah. that that's the way. So now, mm -hmm. if later on we come back to this, but anything else when it comes to because um, when we say righteousness, we have to also understand what unrighteousness was, that now we have righteousness. <laughs> if you believe life as a free gift, you're called righteous. Yeah, yeah. If you believe death is the way to life, it's unrighteousness. Mm. That's God's choice from the beginning. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you say, what do I need to do to have life? Eter inherit eternal life. Master, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? There is no end to what you need to do because it's a law. Mm. But the moment you say, be merciful to me, he says, yes. I mean, this is a, this is a good news. Mm -hmm. You know, we shouldn't go, oh, yeah, but... 
I mean, this is, this is, you got to go, oh, yes, thank you. Yeah, I don't need to do anything. This is a good news. Mm -hmm. So now our part in the journey, they just shall live by faith. Okay. So what is the faith to believe in him? That God justifies the ungodly, the, yeah. right? To believe that God raises the dead. That our faith is not in ourselves, but in him who raises the dead. I have come so, across so many people that they call for prayer or, you know, you know, what else do I need to do? Yeah. Well, what's wrong with me? What have I not done that I haven't received this yet? Right? And, and, and the answer is like, you don't need to do anything. If the righteous requirement could come with the law, yeah. Christ didn't, didn't need to die. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you really think that what I'm going to do, I can get something from God. And that is actually a definition of law. So if I think that because I'm going to do this, then at the end, because of that, I'm going to have this thing, that right there shows that it's a law, it, the, the law is in the picture. Yeah. And as long as the law is in the picture, it's the works of the law. So the free gift cannot be received because it's free. John says, no <laughs> one has ever seen God. The only begotten has declared him to us. No one has ever seen God, but the only begotten has <laughs> declared him to us. Nobody knows who God is yes. except the son who declared him. And if you listen to him, then you can understand who God is. Mm. When Jesus came, he said, you have never seen God ne nor seen his form, but I have seen him. Which means <laughs> what I say yeah. about God is the truth, not mm. what you think. Mm. Or not and what you were told. Not what you were told. Yeah. I came to yeah. change your perspective mm -hmm. about God. Right? With that comes the new way. With that comes the truth. With that comes the life. Yeah. So your way of thinking of the, the broad way simply is uh, the way you want to describe God. Yeah. The narrow way is let God describe himself. Mm. Right? That was good. The humans have always yeah. variation. Yeah. He doesn't. He's always the same. Imperfection, yes. Yes. Only the one who is perfect never changes. That's right. Those who are not perfect, they grow. Mm -hmm. But if you are perfect, where are you going? Can you... <laughs> right? You are already in the fullness, right? Exactly. So now we have, he says, he came to bring perfectness. Yes, that's right. Which means you start from perfectness. Mm. You don't have to be growing. Mm by your own works, you receive the gift of perfection. Here's the thing, because the seed is the perfect. First Peter 1.18, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abide forever. You must know that you were redeemed from the useless, fruitless way of living inherited by the tradition from your forefathers. Mm -hmm. So not with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but you were purchased with the precious blood of Jesus. So we were talking this free gift is not cheap. Yeah. It has been purchased with the great price, with the precious blood of Christ, the Messiah, like that of a sacrificial lamb without blemish or spot. So basically, he had to give his life for you to have this free gift. Everything else will perish. You have problems. You have sickness. You have stuff. They're perishing away. Why? Because the seed yeah. is only the remaining one. The seed is going to remain forever. Everything else that is not in the seed of the word of God, that is not according to grace, that is not according to his gift, his righteousness, is going to perish away. And we want it to perish away. <laughs> and that seed will grow. 
Yes. That seed will become the fullness of God because you have received God. You didn't receive a portion of God. That's right. You have received the fullness of God in your spirit. And he says now all that he's doing, he's helping you, giving you the spirit of revelation and understanding. So your heart is also filled with God. <laughs> so once you, that, that, you have that, it's like the perfected love. Yes. Okay. So now we're talking about the seed. Abel was called righteous. Hebrews 11 says, because of the gift that he brought. His gift was a sacrifice of an animal. The offering that Cain brought yes. was the fruit of the field. He brought the fruit of his own hand. Why? Because he says he was the tiller of the ground, <laughs> Cain, yeah. but Abel was the keeper of the sheep. Or the shepherd. Or the shepherd of the sheep. Okay. God had not cursed sheep. He, had, he said that the land is, the ground is cursed. Because of Out the of the sweat of your face you shall eat. Yeah. So he came and brought something out of that land. Sweat of his out face. Out of sweat of his face, offering to God. <laughs> so it could never be accepted. It couldn't. But the other one, yeah. he brings <laughs> animals, showing that they both had heard the gospel that yes. Jesus is going to come and actually he's the priest already yes. Yes. and forgiven. Your offenses mm -hmm. are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. If you come to me uh, recognizing that I have sacrificed for you, mm -hmm. you don't need to bring the sacrifice. So in Hebrews 11, he says, God testifying of Abel's gift that it was righteous. Yes. <laughs> You can never be righteous mm. except believing that God justifies mm. the ungodly. <laughs> he believed that God justifies the ungodly yeah. through doing what was a representative of what Jesus was going to do. Yeah. Now he says he was a seed, mm. Abel. And when he was killed by Cain, God gives them another son. Mm. Eve says that God has given me another seed because Abel was murdered by Cain. What seed? The seed of God. Yes, Abel right. was called righteous. Mm. The other one, Cain, was unrighteous. That's what Jude talks about. Yes. He says the way of Cain. I'm going to read that. Why? Because he went the other way. He understood Abel, what is righteousness, mm -hmm. which is not by my works, not by my power, yeah. but by the Spirit, Yeah. So, which is God mm. giving it to me. So basically Cain brought an offering by the works of his hand. His hand. Abel was only a shepherd. Cain was working with the sweat of his face and brought a fruit from the sweat of his face as an offering. Yeah. He doesn't accept this offering mm -hmm. because it's a free gift. The offering that is from the sweat of the face of a man is not accepted because it's from the cursed ground. And then, and then God comes to Cain and says, where's your brother? He says, what, am I my brother's keeper? The word keeper is shepherd. Am I my brother's shepherd? He was supposed to be his brother's shepherd. We, we see that Peter writes that, and he says, shepherd the flock of God. What does shepherding mean? Take care of. Cover them. Cover feed them, them. Feed them. them. You love them. Don't shepherding. Them. He says, am I my brother's, sh uh, brother's shepherd? The answer, you were supposed to be brothers, your, your brother's shepherd. Love your brother. Yeah. When you love your brother, you are the shepherd. Yeah. When they love you, they're your shepherd, basically, because you're protecting each other in love. They were two <laughs> seeds, Abel and Cain, and they were from the same father, from Adam. And when Adam missed it, basically, <laughs> when God came, he prophesied that uh, he talked about the seeds. He mm. talked to serpent and he said, him, the one that actually comes from the woman, pointing at Jesus, he will crush mm -hmm. the seed of that serpent. Mm. So in that picture, we have the first two seeds. We have Abel and Cain. One is the child of the devil. The other is child of God, mm. simply if we use simple language. There were two seeds. One was righteous, one was unrighteous. And the reason this was, was counted righteous because he believed that God justifies the ungodly. He believed that God is good. Mm. The other one thought, I have to yeah. make up. Yes for what I have done. Yeah. 
and he worked with the sweat, sweat of his face, <laughs> yeah. and he made something, <laughs> and he brought to give that to God, hoping that God would receive his offering, that he would be righteous also. And we see Jesus started bleeding yeah. long before the torment and torture started. His sweat became the blood and dropped. Yeah. On the same ground that it was cursed by the sweat of the face of Adam. By the sweat of your face you shall eat of it. So now it says, now you have been pur purchased by the blood of Jesus. That's why you can have the free gift of grace. And that sweat became a blood signifying the righteous blood that is now blessing the ground. Is not crying out for vengeance as the blood of Abel, crying out from heaven, from the sweat of his face to the ground and is speaking mercy. Because this is how precious his blood is to redeem you from fruitless and useless way of your forefathers. What is the way of the forefathers? The way of Adam. That you, by the sweat of your face, you get something. Yeah. By the works of your hand, you think you're going to get something. The land is going to produce thorns. And then Hebrews says, you have not yet resisted against <laughs> <That's right>. sin <laughs> yes. to bloodshed. Yes. Okay. Pointing at the night that Jesus actually, he resisted sin. He said, my soul is sorrowful. And he prayed to God. And he said, if it is possible, mm. take away this cup from me. Mm -hmm. Yet, not my will, but your, your will. will be done. And he already knew that his will is that he would lay down his life. Yeah. So he says, it came to a point that he could have done something else by the sweat of his face. Mm. But he resisted. Until it became a drop. Until it became also blood. Wow. He, he could have given into the temptation that came. Yes to be producing something out of the sweat of his face, meaning simply out of flesh do something and say, yeah. that's it, yeah. you know? But then he says, no, he resisted that yeah. temptation. He resisted that and then he prayed to God mm. because he believed that he, it says he committed himself to him. Who judges, who judges righteously. righteously. And he said, not my will. Your so because of that, he was strengthened. He says angels came and strengthened him. So the sweat of his face becoming blood is a representation of him resisting unrighteousness. Not giving offended. Not giving Not offended. Giving offended. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The ground the, is the earth, but Adam is taken from it. Yeah. So you are the ground too. Yeah, the flesh. The flesh is the ground. So now Paul goes and says, there's a thorn in my flesh. Mm -hmm. The land who doesn't receive the rain produced thorns. Mm -hmm. So the flesh is the land. So that was cursed mm -hmm. in Genesis yeah. mm -hmm. because Adam refused to receive the grace. That's why your flesh, if it doesn't receive, is going to produce uh, the thorn. And this is the, this grace is coming on everybody mm. and it comes often yeah so what all we are trying to say here we that we need to understand that it is only by grace yeah. it is not the works of our hand it is not how much offering we want to bring because the offering that we bring is the sweat of our face yeah. from the ground that was cursed mm -hmm. and it's not acceptable to receive such a um, great gift because it's like you go and give 50 cents and you want a Lamborghini. And says the blood of Jesus, this grace is worth the blood of the Son of God. He says all your righteousness is as filter acts. Yeah. But the right, if you let His righteousness dwell in you, then you will bear fruit. You will bear fruit. You will not till the ground. That's right. You will allow He, He says, that's amazing. Mm. He says, I am the true vine and you are the branches. My father is the gardener. That's right. You don't go do the tilling of the ground. Yeah. You remain in him. He brings the pure water of river of mm. water to your root and then you drink the water. Yeah. And then you bear the fruit. Yeah. So the righteous living is to be planted in God. Yes. 
always mm -hmm. knowing that at any moment if I want mm -hmm. anything it's at my disposal mm. John 15 which starts by I am the one you are the branches mm -hmm. if you abide in me my word the water will abide in you and you shall bear fruit and by this <laughs> My father will, will be, be glorified. glorified. Not, by, not by you tilling the ground and bringing a fruit to him. Yes. By you remaining in him. He's the tree. He's the, the water. He's yeah. everything. You are just a branch that are grafted in. And his <laughs> water flows into you and you only yeah. bear fruit. Yeah. And when the seed is already planted, it is receiving grace. Yeah. Yeah, now, exactly. now we don't want to go, okay, how can we receive? Oh, let's receive. No, no that's the game work. <laughs> that's the game work, right? So we want to we wanna come to this, that, that it says you, you must understand yeah. this. The second Peter, first Peter says, you must know yeah. that you have already been redeemed. You have. It's, it's just to know and remember that because of the blood of Jesus, you have been born again from this seed. So now, don't think that you can add to it. That's it. Don't think that you can add something to help the growth. Right? Yeah. That you can add some. You have already been born again from this yeah, seed. Yeah, if you try to believe, it still work. <laughs> That's right. It's it a very narrow way. It's a simple understanding. It's a, like child, like, do you want to be righteous? Yes. That's it. That's it. So now, what do you need? This. Done. As simple as this. So now, <laughs> if anything else comes to mind that, okay, so now, how or when, he says that's the knowledge of good and evil. Hmm. Because... You didn't trust, then you asked. <laughs> because there was another knowledge coming and say, okay, did God really say if you ask and that's it? Don't you think maybe you yeah. should now also pray one more time? Yeah. Or maybe you should uh, do something else. Maybe you should pray for it more. You know, so all those things are a temptation of being to offend, put you to be in offended. Work. Yeah at what God already says. Mm -hmm. uh, so, of course, there are things that maybe they don't, they're not going the way that we want to, but that's the reason we remain in God, we abide in God, and we don't, we refuse to go to any other wisdom, because that is complete death. Mm -hmm. So all we do is we want to basically know, we want to see, we want to understand clear that previously, Maybe we didn't know what is unrighteousness. Maybe we thought everything that we do, every uh, evil work or every evil thought or evil uh, work is unrighteousness. But God's definition of unrighteousness is the root. If He trims the fruit, not the root, uh, maybe five days later, hmm. again you will have the fruit. But if he deals with the root, you don't have that problem mm. anymore. So that's why he, when he came, he said, the axe is already at the root of the tree. Because every tree that my father has not planted will be cast out. From where? Heart. Mm. So if, the, if there is bitterness in heart, we shouldn't be trying to just not speak bitter today. Mm. Because if we try to, then tomorrow maybe we do it. Mm, because but the root if, is there. Yeah. Yeah. But if we understand to get, the, get it from the root, then it will be gone. Even for that, the answer is grace. Jude chapter 1. So this is the context. Verse chapter 1, <laughs> verse uh, 4. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jude is talking about those people who reject the grace. Yeah. It's very simple. So woe to them, woe to them. Now he's going to go and list all of that. Is It is 
simply yeah. those people have rejected the grace of the yeah. Lord Jesus Christ. And verse before, verse 3 says, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend <laughs> earnestly yeah. for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. Then he says what the yeah. faith is. So the faith the is delivered already to the yeah. saints. And it's the grace Yes. in the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. So now what was the faith? Believing that God would justify the ungodly and then your faith will be given to you as righteousness. Will That's be right. Will be considered as righteousness. Yeah. So now here he says, there are certain men who have come and they're denying the Lord Jesus and everything that comes with him, justification, righteousness, and grace. Okay, so now verse um, 11. Woe to them. Who? Those who have forsaken the faith, the Lord Jesus. And the grace and of the grace. Jesus, yes. Verse 11, woe to them. For they, th th this is the woe which means they have put themselves in this place. God is not putting any woe on them. They have For gone. they have gone in the way of Cain. So now we understand that what is the way of Cain. To bring an offering from the till the, till the ground with the sweat of the face and bring an offering to God and reject the grace. Mm -hmm. Have run greedily in the error of Balaam for reward. That word prophet? Is reward. So these are the same group. He says they are following the way of Cain and the error of Balaam mm. for reward. To, to him who works, the reward is death. Mm. But to him who believes, it's justification. That's right. The reward or the wages, the same <laughs> word in Romans 4. He says, the wages to him who works yeah. is death. Balaam had something called the error of Balaam for reward. Right. He thought the reward is the way that actually you work for mm. and you get it. Yeah. Because to him who works, the reward is counted as death. Mm. But to him who believes, his faith is counted for righteousness. So it's not death anymore, it's a credit that is being given to you, basically. So he says now, Balaam had an error considering his understanding of what reward is. Mm. And he says it's the same error that is called the way of Cain. Mm. Yeah. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 15. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam the son of Beer, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Yes. That was his error, mm. the wages of unrighteousness, mm. rather than the reward of righteousness, righteousness yes. which is believing, not working. Mm. Yes. So that is something that causes them to constantly be in error Mm. And because of that, he says, they have become like clouds without waters, wells without waters, uh, trees without fruit. Yeah, because they reject the grace. Because they reject grace. They think by their own works they can get something. So look at First John chapter 3 also. Verse 10, because we said there are two seeds, seed of the devil, seed of God, Abel and Cain. Mm. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, mm. nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain <laughs> who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. Mm. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil. Which <laughs> works? Yeah. The works of the flesh, bringing of the fruit of the ground. The cursed ground, yeah. N and not believing God. Mm. His works were evil 
and his brothers righteous. So the works of Cain was evil, the works of Abel was righteous, and his work was believing. Quickly look at Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of the things hoped for. So now verse 4. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Mm. So this is the work of Abel. God testifying of his gifts, his work is considered the offering, that sacrifice that he brought, which was not from the ground, mm. which was not the fruit of his, the works of flesh, mm. the fruit of his hand, but believing in God. Mm. Okay, so go back to 1 John. So now we have the understanding of righteousness and unrighteousness. So when we read, we should consider what righteousness is. Verse 7, little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. And we know righteous is the just and the just shall live by faith. The way you started, the way you continue. Mm -hmm. You believed in God, you continue to believe in God. You don't go back to works of the flesh. Mm. Verse 8, He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Sin. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the work of the devil has been destroyed. Yeah. For his seed, the seed of God, remains. remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness, righteousness is not of God. Yeah. So the devil was a wisdom that came and brought the second way, which was called unrighteousness, which is not righteousness, which is not eating of the tree of life, believing mm -hmm. God for his goodness, mm -hmm. but actually come questioning God for his good goodness. Mm. <laughs> so that's unrighteousness. Mm. He says, whoever has been born of God does not practice this but actually practices righteousness. And right a few verses before that, this is how he starts. He says, my little children, uh, see what manner of love the Father has bestowed mm. upon us, that we should be called the children of God. Yes. And it has not yet been revealed to us what we shall be, yeah. but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be, we like, shall him. be like him. 